Uh, good morning. Um, today uh, we shall have a, a quiz exam. You shall have a quiz exam uh, now. Uh, and uh, like the previous quiz, uh, you shall have 10 questions, multiple choice questions. What you need to do, uh, uh, please go uh, Messenger. Uh, Facebook Messenger of my uh, uh, page and write your name and student ID. And then when uh, the a question will appear uh, in the screen, I shall read out. And uh, for example, question one, if answer is D, then you simply write one D. And then I shall move to second question. You can make comma, and see the answer of the second question. If uh, second question answer is uh, C, then you can write 2C. So 1D, 2C, like that, uh, you can answer the 10 questions very quickly. Uh, and once I complete uh, the, you know, showing uh, uh, the all questions uh, uh, up to 10, and then what you will do, you just send the uh, message to me. So I shall get uh, all of your answers and uh, it would be help me uh, to evaluate. Uh, are you ready? Yes, sir. Uh, do anyone have any question? If no question, then I shall uh, go for the, you know, uh, starting uh, the uh, your uh, exam. So uh, soon you will see in the screen the first question. Yes, can you see the first question clearly? Yes, sir. Okay, excellent. Let me set up things here. Uh, this is your first question uh, of the quiz exam. What is the objective of chromatography? A, separation of the mixture of compound. B, determination of molecular weight of a compound. C, determination of molecular formula of the mixture. D, separation of a volatile compound from the extract. Your first question, what is the objective of chromatography? A, separation of the mixture of compound. B, determination of molecular weight of a compound. C, determination of molecular formula of the mixture. D, separation of a volatile compound from the extract. So you should just write one and then a letter which is correct answer one a or b or c or d uh, i'm going to the second uh, question which chromatographic method uses silica gel as adsorbent in the stationary phase a gas chromatography b ion exchange chromatography C, gel filtration chromatography. D, paper chromatography. Uh, I repeat, which chromatographic method uses silica gel as adsorbent in the stationary phase? A, gas chromatography. B, ion exchange chromatography. C, gel filtration chromatography. And D, Paper chromatography. Uh, I am moving to uh, question three. Question three, which liquid chromatography requires high pressure for increasing its performance? A, TLC, B, GC, C, IEC, and D, HPLC. I repeat, which 
liquid chromatography requires high pressure for increasing its performance. A TLC, B GC, C IEC, and D HPLC. I am moving the question number four. Question number four Which spectroscopic method is used to determine the properties of proton or carbon of an unknown chemical structure? A EIMS, B NMR. C, C, D, D, U, B. Again, which spectroscopic method is used to determine the properties of proton or carbon of a, an unknown chemical structure? A, EIMS, B, NMR, C, C, D, D, U, B. Uh, question number five, which compound is not a natural product? Step to my scene. A, B, DDT, C, caffeine, and D, cocaine. Question number five, again, which compound is not a natural product? A, step to my scene. B, DDT, C, caffeine, and D, cocaine. I'm moving to question number six. Question number six, which natural product uh, from grapevine fruit has high antioxidant activity? Again, which natural product from grapevine fruit has high antioxidant activity. A, naringenin, B, caffeine, C, resveratrol, D, condensed tannin. Again, which natural product from grapevine fruit has high antioxidant activity? A, naringenin, B, caffeine, C, resveratrol, D, condensed tannin. I'm moving. Question number seven. Question number seven. What is the backbone of a flavonoid? A, C6, C3, C6. B, C6, C2, C6. C, C6, C4, C6. D, C5, C3, C4. Again, Question number seven, what is the backbone of a flavonoid? A, C6, C3, C6. B, C6, C2, C6. C, C6, C4, C6. D, C5, C3, C4. I'm moving to question number eight. Question number eight, what is the positive effect of free radical in our cell? A, immunity against pathogen. B, cancer. C, aging. D, nutrition. Again, what is the positive effect of free radical in our cell? A, immunity against pathogen. B, cancer. C, aging, D, mutation. I'm moving question number nine. Question number nine, which drug is effective in treating an ICU COVID-19 patient? A, sir, I'm case seven number show code, sir. Uh, this is question number nine. Uh, I'm uh, reading, so uh, please follow it. Question number nine, A, dexamethasone, B, hydroxychloroquine, C, abermectin, and D, penicillin. And I am moving to the last question, question number 10. Question number 10, 
what is the causal agent of COVID-19 disease? A. SARS hyphen COV hyphen two. B. SARS hyphen COV. C. SARS hyphen COV hyphen three. D. MARS hyphen COV. Uh, again, question number ten. What is the causal agent of COVID-19 disease? A. SARS hyphen O hyphen two B SARS hyphen O C SARS hyphen O hyphen three and D Mars hyphen O. Uh, thank you very much. Please do not forget to write your name and ID number, and I am expecting. Uh, your answer uh, within, you know, uh, uh, two minutes. Thank you very much. Sir, Assalamualaikum, sir. Waalaikum salam. Sir, I do number question to show you. Do number question to show you. Sir, need it to disturb you. I'm showing you. Three children are there. Need to connect with you. Do number two question to show you. Which chromatographic method uses silica gel as adsorbent in the stationary phase? A. Gas chromatography. B. Ion exchange chromatography. C. Gel filtration chromatography. And D paper chromatography. Which chromatographic method uses silica gel as adsorbent in the stationary phase? A gas chromatography, B ion exchange chromatography, uh, C gel filtration chromatography, and D paper chromatography. That's all. Yes, sir. So I, I expect all of you uh, have uh, already sent your answer uh, to my messenger box. And uh, now I shall discuss uh, another topic uh, that is uh, Can you see the slide? Yes, sir. Oh, very good. Uh, Nobel Bioactive Natural Products for Sustainable Management of Plant Diseases and Bioprospective. Actually, uh, this uh, uh, topic uh, was set for a, a Fulbright outreach lecture in USA. I delivered at uh, University of uh, Fort Bailey State University in Georgia. Uh, and here you can find uh, our own discoveries uh, on bioactive natural products, especially the natural product discovered by me and my group members as well as collaborators. So uh, these are uh, not you know, published in the book and others, but uh, these are fresh things. And in the developed country, uh, especially for masters and PhD students, uh, professors usually share the uh, discoveries in their lab uh, in the formal course. So I am doing uh, that. Uh, these are not uh, interesting uh, for you, uh, but uh, outline of the today's talk, discovery of bioactive natural products for sustainable management of plant disease. So today I am focusing uh, the bioactive natural products that we discovered uh, for sustainable management of plant diseases. And that is all the compounds have biological activity against the plant disease. And signal transduction pathways of bioactive natural products. This is very important. How a, bio, a bioactive natural product is perceived uh, by the 
cell of a uh, targeted uh, plant pathogen. And then we shall discuss bioprospecting of novel antibiotics because uh, some novel antibiotics has bioprospecting. That means you can make industry based on that uh, antibiotic. And uh, obviously, uh, collaboration opportunity not so interesting for you, but you can understand. Uh, impacts of industrial and green revolution. Obviously, you know that in the history, human history, there were two uh, big revolutions. One was uh, in uh, you know uh, 18th century, uh, which is called industrial revolution, and another in the 20th century called green revolution. Industrial revolution after the discovery of engine in by James Watt. Or uh, lots of uh, you know. Uh, industry uh, where developed uh, uh, where engine replaced the job of human. Uh, so uh, we are now living uh, in this industrial revolution era because uh, most of the uh, happened. Uh, industrial revolution uh, is, uh, you know, empowered human uh, incredibly. And uh, now you can make a, uh, you, uh, you know, a high raise building uh, even 100 floors or like that. And in a small area where one people uh, family can, uh, 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 you know, accommodate it now, you can uh, accommodate even 10,000 uh, people uh, in a high rise building. That means human capacity increased, you know, thousand fold by the uh, discovery of uh, discoveries that back the industrial revolution. Uh, industrial revolution uh, also brought some big problem. Uh, the problem is, uh, you know, the uh, global warming and environmental uh, pollution. Uh, these are the real problem that we are facing. This is why we are thinking to uh, 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 thinking uh, to find the ways uh, to uh, uh, get out from the, uh, you know, uh, devastating. Uh, bad effects of the industrial revolution. Uh, another revolution, a green revolution, which was started in uh, Mexico by uh, Norman Borlaug, uh, Dr. Norman Borlaug, uh, a, a famous uh, wheat breeder, uh, and uh, he developed high yielding varieties and some agronomic uh, methods uh, uh, that helped us to feed billions of people. You can see the human population graph until industrial revolution, it was almost static. But after industrial revolution and green revolution, human population is now 7.3 billion, which is expected to rise 9.7 billion by the year 2050. Uh, so human population is increasing uh, and green revolution uh, helped us to feed billions of people. Uh, and green revolution also brought some uh, big problem due to use of, uh, you know, insecticide, chemical fertilizers. Our environment is deteriorated, and the soil health also uh, significantly uh, damaged. And uh, you know, water bodies also, uh, you know, suffers from uh, loss of uh, uh, pollution. Uh, this is why we need uh, some. Uh, you know, a second green revolution, which is free from uh, this bad, uh, uh, you know, uh, effect. And industrial revolution, the, uh, another revolution is coming, which is called, uh, you know, uh, fourth industrial revolution. Uh, that is uh, new revolution uh, by using artificial intelligence. Uh, and it is coming soon. Green revolution, as I mentioned, uh, initiatives involve the development of high yielding crop varieties, intensive use of irrigation, hybridized seeds, modern agronomic practices, synthetic fertilizers, and pesticides. These are the major initiatives of Green Revolution. And Green Revolution helped uh, avoid widespread famine and fed billions of people because before Green Revolution, famine uh, was uh, uh, you know, common and many people are died due to starvation. Deter, uh, uh, Green Revolution deteriorated uh, natural resources such as soils, water, and affected biodiversity and human health. 
and green, re green revolution seems unable to meet future food security and made agriculture highly dependent on fossil fuel. Whatever we are moving uh, in this uh, society uh, for the human benefit, all are backed by the fossil fuel that is petroleum. So we indirectly eating the petroleum or for fossil fuel. So fossil fuels are, you know, dirty things and pollute the environment, uh, increase the carbon dioxide concentration and other gases in the uh, greenhouse gases in the environment. And as a result, the uh, earth is becoming, uh, uh, you know, uh, problematic or unhabitable for the human. Environment safe and low input sustainable approaches are needed. Therefore, environmentally safe and low input sustainable approaches are needed because low input because uh, uh, currently uh, in agriculture, the biggest problem is uh, the high input cost, you know, for production of one kilogram of rice, uh, we use 3000 to 4000 liters of water, which is very expensive. Chemicals are expensive like, uh, you know, fertilizer and uh, pesticide. Uh, as a result, if a farmer produce uh, one kilogram of rice, uh, it, it costs, you know, nearly 30 taka. Uh, and uh, it is uh, a very big burden and uh, farmers cannot get the profit uh, from the production. So uh, this is why low input uh, sustainable approaches are needed, uh, which is, you know, cost effective or low cost. Emerging plant disease and, and food security, I would like to uh, talk about uh, top population growth. Uh, food production will need to increase by 70 to 100 percent by 2050 for a well-fed world uh, population. Uh, therefore, uh, we have to increase our food production 70 to 100 percent. Uh, However, uh, emerging fungal diseases are increasingly recognized as, a, uh, as a presenting a worldwide threat to food security. Uh, uh, in uh, the 19th century, late blight uh, led uh, to starvation, late blight of 42. In Ireland, uh, you know, uh, caused the death of one million, more than one million people in Ireland due to starvation. And it was uh, uh, in the human history uh, called Great Irish Potato Famine due to one plant disease, one million people died and more than one million people migrated from Ireland to other countries. And it was uh, in the human history an un in unprecedented event. And nowadays, the incidence of uh, fungal diseases and other plant diseases are increasing. So economic ruin and the downfall of English government during the Irish potato famine already I discussed. In the 20th century, Dutch elm blight and chestnut blight laid bare urban and forest landscapes in the, uh, you know, uh, Europe. And trade and transport promotes globalization of fungi, thus creating new opportunities for evolution. Because world trade, uh, you know, uh, food uh, materials, for agricultural uh, products uh, from one plant uh, country to another, now, uh, through uh, you know air transport or ship transport, increased significantly. Uh, uh, as a result, you know, uh, diseases are also spreading to the earth, uh, and this is why we have to be very careful. Uh, here you see late blight of potato. Uh, 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 rice blast is another dangerous disease which, you know, uh, decreased the world rice production up to 25% uh, and millions of people could be, uh, uh, you know, uh, fed by uh, the, you know, the rice production decreased by the rice blast. So rice blast almost a worldwide disease. Another dangerous disease is quit trust. Quit trust is a dangerous disease and it is especially UZ99, one strain of quit trust, Paxinia graminis TTC. Uh, it is a serious problem in Africa and many other countries. It was first detected in Uganda, Uganda UZ99. And wheat blast recently uh, came to Bangladesh in uh, 2016. Uh, as uh, uh, as the first occurrence, and it destroyed uh, the uh, you know uh, eight, uh, wheat in eight districts, 
and 15,000 hectares of wheat was destroyed. And it came uh, to Bangladesh through the uh, you know, grain trade. Bangladesh imported a huge amount of uh, uh, wheat grain from Brazil. And Brazil is the, uh, you know, South America is the birthplace of uh, wheat blast. And it has been, uh, a wheat blast was first discovered in uh, uh, Parana state in uh, Brazil and then it spread to Argentina, Bolivia, and Paraguay. Now, uh, South America, in the all continents, only South America are contaminated with wheat dust. But in 2016, it came to a new continent that is in Asia, uh, uh, and more specifically in Bangladesh. And uh, in Bangladesh, you know, 20, uh, uh, a total 20 districts are contaminated, meanwhile, by the wheat blast fungus. And ill loss can be 100% as a result. It is a potentially catastrophic disease uh, uh, for the, uh, you know, uh, Asia because uh, it is a seed-borne as well as airborne disease. So it may spread to other countries in Asia. Our neighbor India is the second largest wheat producing country. China is world number one wheat producing country. If uh, wheat blast moves to uh, these two countries, it would be catastrophic and uh, the uh, world famine uh, will, uh, 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 you know, uh, come back again. Here you can see emergence of fungal diseases, uh, how they are increasing. Uh, this is a paper published in Nature. Uh, uh, here are these graphs showing plant infecting, uh, you know, fungi, how they are uh, increasing from 1995 to 2010. Uh, so four or five fold uh, is increased and this is a true and genuine uh, threat to the food and nutritional security. Uh, despite modern agricultural practices, uh, the, uh, that means pesticide or fungicide use against the disease, disease of the major food crops cause up to 15% post harvest ill loss. Uh, that means a huge amount of food, produced food are lost by the uh, disease. Uh, here, uh, yes, uh, th there are uh, some 47. Uh, it is still a big problem. Uh, 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 I shall discuss on one class of, uh, you know, uh, microorganism called Peronospurumycetes, and they produce juice food. And they are terrestrial and aqu aquatic microorganism resemble fungi. They are not fungi, but uh, look like uh, fungi. Yeah, they belong to the, uh, you know, uh, kingdom of Staminophila uh, and fungi is here. Here you can see the scheme of phylogeny uh, 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 of the eukaryotes. Uh, originally under the kingdom of Staminophila and why I am talking this one because uh, I discovered lots of bioactive compounds against this class of microorganisms because they are uh, dangerous uh, pathogens of plants uh, animals, fishes, even in humans. So they are very, very important. And uh, here you can see uh, Peronospurumycetes phytophthora infestans cause a blight disease in potato, and uh, which caused Irish great famine. And this is, uh, you know, to control the phytophthora infestans in the uh, potato. Worldwide, we spend more than $5 billion per year. So it is still a big problem, even a big problem in Bangladesh. Another disease caused by another uh, Peronospurumycetes, sudden oak death. Uh, thousands of forest, uh, oak forest, oak is very famous for timber, uh, are damaged by the uh, Phytophthora remoran in US. And lots of fishes, you know, fish ulcerative uh, syndromes. So here, many students are fisheries. Uh, you know, uh, people thought the, uh, these uh, diseases are caused by the bacteria, but finally, uh, the pathogen was discovered. Uh, the culprit is aphanomyces. Aphanomyces in badans is uh, causing the ulcerative syndrome as well as saprolegnia. Uh, they are uh, fish pathogen and uh, aphanomyces estasi, aphanomyces in badans and saprolegnia. Therax, they are the dangerous pathogen of fishes and cause ulcerative disease and uh, can kill the fish. And some of the fishes are in, uh, you know, rivers are inundated by the fish. For example, crayfish in Europe, uh, totally inundated by aphanomyces, uh, you know, uh, estasi. Uh, uh, Pythium introduced some one member of, uh, you know, uh, Peronus burumycetes also cause 
disease in human as well as in dogs. So you can understand the economic importance, um, you know, uh, of the of this class of um, microorganisms. They are obviously remember that they are not the fungi. They are uh, fungus like uh, Staminopapilla, and they uh, commonly produce juice food. Uh, this is a scanning electron micro micrograph I took in. Uh, Sapporo, uh, Japan. Here you see five micrometer. That means around seven micrometer uh, length of the juice pool. You cannot see uh, by naked eye, but light microscope you can see only a dot. But here you can see two flagella are present in the uh, 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 juice pool. And uh, when uh, we take the transmission electron microscope, we found that this anterior flagellum is covered with a fine hairs. Each hair is divided into another two branches. And these hairs, uh, uh, you know, juice food used for swimming. And uh, th this is the posterior flagellum. This flagellum juice food used for steering when they swim. So juice food is a motile organism that can sense the uh, host signal and uh, can colonize the host tissue to infect uh, and uh, either fish or uh, plant or other uh, or host organism. And uh, as they produce the juice food, uh, juice food is a, a wallless cell. So juice food is the most vulnerable stage of their life cycle. Here you can see a sugar beet pathogen, uh, uh, which is attracted by the uh, signaling uh, secondary metabolites uh, released from the uh, you know, root and show the chemotaxis. Chemotaxis is a preferential movement of a uh, uh, organism or cell toward a chemical source. So chemotaxis. A chemo means uh, uh, you know uh, chemical and taxis means the movement a movement of the juice food toward a chemical source is called juice food chemotaxis chemotaxis uh, is sh uh, shown by many uh, phytopathogens uh, even uh, you know cancer cell uh, so they uh, uh, find the locate the host by using the chemicals specific chemical signals released from the host and then after uh, uh, you know uh, coming to the uh, root tissues, this is a root tip of a sugar beet. Uh, you see, juice food uh, becomes cyst immature cystospore, and then cystospore, and then penetrate into the uh, cell. That means juice food directly cannot enter into the host. They need to uh, differentiate into uh, a cystospore and germinated, uh, uh, you know, uh, cyst. And this germ tube actually create the pressure. To penetrate the cell wall, uh, uh, our target was main target was how can uh, we uh, you know uh, tackle the juice food uh, so that they cannot show the chemotaxis uh, and even kill the uh, uh, juice food or stop uh, you know differentiation of the juice food or stop germination of the uh, cystospore because if we can do by using chemical intervention then we can control the disease. Uh, we devise you know to discover any. Uh, and these are porous uh, particles used uh, in gas chromatography. So if you add, uh, you know, your crude mixture dissolving ethyl acetate and drop onto the particle and uh, excess solvent, if you extract, uh, you know, absorb by the filter paper, but the porous particle will absorb some of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, solvent mixture. And if you uh, put it in the, uh, yeah, uh, you know, all solvent, ethyl acetate is easily evaporated and only particle will remain. Not only particle, but you know, the compounds, uh, uh, pre uh, 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 compounds uh, which present in the uh, solution will remain inside or outside the, uh, you know, particle. So when you drop the particle, the particle uh, uh, float, you know, uh, on the, uh, as it is porous, float on the uh, water, uh, uh, containing the juice food suspension and it diffuse uh, the compound uh, present uh, or you know coated uh, on its surface so gradually make a gradient and uh, if juice food this compound is bioactive uh, on juice food then juice food respond how juice food can respond in case of inactive juice food uh, cannot sense but if it is attracted all juice food attract toward the particle and uh, you know, uh, around the particle, a mass of juice food you can see. If it is, it can stop the motility of juice food, then juice food passing through the particle, all 
uh, stop, uh, uh, they cannot move, become paralyzed uh, or halted their movement. So halting activity, we call them. And stimulant activity, some compounds can stimulate the movement. That means juice pool swim faster than the uh, normal, uh, you know, control condition. And repellent means some compounds that they repel Juice pool, uh, uh, juice pool do not like those compounds and move away uh, from the uh, compound. So uh, they show repellent activity. As a result, around the particle, you cannot see no juice pool. So this, uh, you know, bioassay method, within a minute, you can see the biological activity very fast and each particle only absorb full in nanoliter of uh, solution. So you do not need to spend much compound for the bioassay. Very small amount, tiny amount you can uh, uh, test and very fast and very convenient method we develop the particle bioassay method. Here you can see an image. This is the particle we dropped into the juice pool suspension. And wh what you can see around the particle, lots of, you know, dots, white dots, they are juice pool uh, seen under light microscope. They are stopped. But you see, uh, 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 far uh, from the uh, you know particle uh, where no compound is diffused, to, uh, uh, tracing of juice pool movements uh, within three seconds, uh, you can see this line means juice pool moved from this place to this place. But uh, this uh, 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 you know crude mixture uh, showed the uh, motility halting activity. So quickly you can see lots of juice pool which are passing through the particle uh, and encounter the uh, you know diffused compound from the particle they stopped but other those are distance safe distance they are still moving uh, normally so uh, uh, this is the halting activity here you can see swimming uh, juice pool how we can see under microscope and uh, here is the new activity that is this particle uh, uh, was treated with a uh, chemical compound which has no activity on juice pool. So you can see the density of juice pool are, you know, normal and no change. Uh, this is why it's no activity. So a compound is active or not, crude extract contain active substance or not, you can easily determine. Here what you can see, here even you cannot see the particle. Particle is fully covered with small dots. These are the juice pool. That means it is an attractant activity, fantastic attractant activity, uh, which covered the juice pool and juice pool aggregated around the particle. Uh, here you see halting activity. Uh, uh, compound diffused, uh, 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 you know, uh, circular uh, area, all uh, juice pool stopped. But here you see in the distance, no juice pool stops. That means uh, this compound is a halting compound. By using this method, we discovered lots of uh, compounds. Here I can so, uh, sh show you some of the chemical structures. For example, diadine and genistein, two isoflavonoids discovered from the glycine max, which is specific attractant for phytophthora shoji. Only phytophthora shoji are attracted uh, by this, uh, you know, host specific signaling compound, but uh, uh, natural product. But other juice pool never be attracted by this one. That means juice pool has some host uh, uh, specificity. Uh, you know, uh, Phytophthora shoji infect the glycine max, never infect other plants. Uh, and uh, they are guided by the host and find the host by using the diatine and genistein. Similarly, indole 3 carbaldehyde isolated from the Brassica campestis uh, variety uh, capitata uh, that attract the juice pool of Aphonomyces rapani uh, and pronatine, uh, pisum sativum, uh, that is green peas uh, plant uh, 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 produce pronatine, which attract Aphonomyces eutasis juice pool. And these are the, uh, you know, pathogen of each uh, plant and uh, scientists discovered uh, the, you know, this host specific signal. And in our case, uh, when I did the research, we, uh, we found that a root tip of uh, sugar beet or spinach, uh, if we, uh, you know, uh, put into the juice pool suspension of Aphanomyces cochloides, Aphanomyces cochloides immediately aggregate uh, on the root surface. That means root secretes some attractant uh, natural product uh, that attract the uh, juice pool. So juice pool use 
the signaling compound as a guide to locate the host. So our target was to discover the signaling compound. And interestingly, we discovered this compound. Uh, this compound is a very interesting compound, you see, coclofilin A. Uh, here, uh, it is a flavone, uh, uh, A ring, uh, uh, a B ring, and C ring. Here, you see, this ring is completely unsubstituted. Uh, here, only five hydroxy and root rod disease in uh, sugar beets, spinach, and few other members of Canopodiaceae. And when we found this phenomena in the microscope, it triggered us to discover uh, this compound. And by using, you know, 23 kilograms of dried roots, we discovered 1.2 milligram of this compound. How? Uh, as you know, by using chromatography as well as spectroscopic method, we finally elucidated the structure. So this is the very interesting compound, and we named this coclofilin A because uh, it uh, 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 coclofilin. Filin means attract and cochlear means comes from the cochlearis, and A means we thought we may get another compound, we can name it cochlearphilin B, uh, another attractant. Here is the uh, structure of cochlearphilin A. We asked the question whether cochlearphilin A, uh, in addition to attractant activity, has any other role, specific role, for example, Juspur, after attraction, needs to, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, insist, uh, become encysted cystospore and then germinate uh, uh, for, uh, you know, initiate the infection. Uh, juice spore alone cannot enter into the plant tissue to initiate the infection. So our question was whether cochlefilling A has any other uh, role uh, in addition to the, uh, you know, attractant activity. That means whether it is involved in Ancestment that is a triggering developmental transition and germination of the uh, root, uh, uh, germination of the juice food on the plant food. And we found that a 10 to the power minus 10 molar concentration of cochlefilin A trigger attractant activity. That means attract juice food. But you see, when uh, uh, juice food comes to the root, concentration obviously higher because root is producing the compound and that it, it is diffusing and the concentration is decreasing. When juice pour comes uh, at the uh, you know, uh, root surface, uh, then uh, the concentration becomes 100% higher. And at that concentration, uh, juice pour becomes insisted. That means the same compound uh, at higher concentration trigger uh, you know, expression of the different gene and then encystment of the juice pool taken place. And not only encystment, germination also taken place. Here you can see juice pool germinated, and this is the particle fully covered by, uh, you know, uh, encysted juice pools. And here is the root. So root and this particle, particle is just like acting like a demi root. Uh, juice pool cannot understand whether it is root or not because they are sensing by the cochlefilling A present in the uh, diffusing from the particle diffusing from the root. So uh, uh, we devise this bioassay method just like uh, it behaves like a, a dummy of the root. And here is the particle fully covered with the uh, germinated cyst uh, that, uh, you know, all the germ tubes, you know, penetrating the uh, 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 particle, a uh, porous particle like the uh, root tissue. So what we uh, discovered, we discovered that cochlefilin A is not only an attractant, but also uh, a trigger, uh, triggering compound for encystment and germination uh, in the, uh, you know, uh, root surface. And uh, uh, then we asked how cochlefilin is, uh, uh, you know, perceived by the host signal, uh, you know, juice food. Juice food has some receptor in their membrane. And uh, then we did lots of work to discover how juice food perceived the signal. And we found that by using different pharmacological technique, we found that uh, G protein activator, mestuperan, uh, also induced the encystment and germination of juice food. Mestuperan is a tetra decapeptide. Uh, it is produced by the wasp. You know, wasp venom uh, is, uh, you know, mestuperan. Mestuperan, very expensive, uh, you know, tetra decapeptide. It contains 14 amino acid, and it can also trigger encystment of, of juice food. And it has already been known that it is a G protein activator. And G protein uh, uh, coupled receptor are very famous in uh, you know, cellular system. 
eukaryotic cellular system. And we discovered that uh, Peronosporum ICT juice pool also uh, possess uh, G protein coupled receptor to perceive the uh, cochlefilling A signal and then uh, become encysted and uh, germinated because mestoperon also, if you use, uh, can show the same activity. So this is a very nice analogy and we published the paper in uh, Plant and Soil, very famous journal. So uh, we uh, did uh, uh, some other work uh, to understand the, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, biological activity of the cochlefilling A uh, in depth. Uh, for example, juice pur, you see, uh, the morphology of juice pur is like that. It has two flagella and there is a ventral group. And when we, uh, and juice pur has a, uh, you know, cytoskeleton and all cell has the cytoskeleton. We tested whether cytoskeletal protein, actin or tubulin, cytoskeletal protein are mainly two types. One uh, uh, is actin, another is tubulin. We tested whether uh, cytoskeletal protein is changed or not uh, by the uh, action of cochlefilling A. First, we visualized cytoskeletal uh, uh, actin uh, in the uh, juice pool. Juice pool cytoskeletal actin is fine hairs as well as, you know, in the ventral group, uh, there are accumulation of the hairs. And when plaque, each plaque is connected with the fine uh, hairs, that means uh, cochlefilling A trigger polymerization of the uh, filamentous actin. Uh, and then when it germinates, again, it becomes the uh, depolymerized and becomes the fine hairy, you know, filamentous structure. And uh, in the uh, cystospore part, still uh, you see the plaque form. So a cochlefilin A, uh, the host specific signal, not only trigger the uh, attractant activity, it is, uh, uh, you know, uh, cochlefilling A is perceived by the host cell uh, using the G protein coupled receptor. And then cochlefilling A trigger, uh, you know, polymerization, dynamic polymerization and depolymerization of the uh, F actin. And we tested in case of tubulin, we didn't find any change in the tubulin. That means cochlefilling A specifically work on dynamic polymerization and depolymerization of the uh, uh, actin in the uh, 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 developing uh, spore of Aphanomyces cochlearis. So this is a very nice conclusion and we published this uh, big discovery in Cell Motility and Cytoskeleton uh, Journal. Uh, so science, uh, I, I'm telling you uh, this story because you can understand how uh, a drug candidate or a molecule, bioactive natural product uh, works on the cell. So you can have the insight of, uh, uh, you know, uh, activity of the bioactive natural product. Juice pur uh, perceive the host signal by G protein couple receptor, which activates phospholipase D. In the cell mem membrane, phospholipase D and phospholipase C, they are involved in production of phosphatidic acid and calcium as a second messenger in the pathway. So uh, these uh, informations we, clarified and we analyzed the lipid in the membrane of the juice pool and we found that yes phosphatidic acid is uh, produced uh, in uh, when juice pool is triggered by cochlefilling uh, or mestoperon. Uh, so uh, this was a very interesting uh, finding uh, and uh, we got the insight about how juice pool is uh, you know, functioning, the mode of action of, uh, you know, uh, cochlefilling A on the juice pool. But we have not yet been discovered the, uh, you know, uh, clear uh, characteristics of the receptor protein, as well as we don't know exactly which gene is involved in uh, and express during the differentiation of the juice pool. But these are the new uh, scientific questions need to be discovered by further research. So this is uh, all about uh, today's uh, lecture. If you have any question, then I shall uh, ask the question. And later part of the lecture, I shall deliver uh, tomorrow. Thank you very much. Please ask me a question. Yes, Jinnah. 
স্যার ওই যে আমার আগের চ্যাপ্টার গুলো থেকে একটা কোশ্চেন ছিল স্যার অ্যাফিনিটি ক্রোমাটোগ্রাফি হোয়াট ইজ অ্যাফিনিটি ক্রোমাটোগ্রাফি এটা একটু আর একটু ক্লিয়ার করলে স্যার ভালো হতো একটু মানে জটিল মনে হয়েছে বুঝতে পারছেন অ্যাফিনিটি ক্রোমাটোগ্রাফি मींस ইন এ ক্রোমাটোগ্রাফি ইউ নো ওয়ান ইজ মোবাইল ফেজ অ্যানাদার ইজ এ স্টেশনারি ফেজ liquid uh, uh, you know compound dissolved in liquid medium they are moving uh, th- uh, towards the gravity uh, 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 dissolved in the organic solvent so you we use uh, organic solvent as the mobile phase but we use silica gel or other resin or gel as the you know stationary phase so a stationary phase if con- uh, contains some affinity affinity means Uh, affinity towards ion or towards molecule then uh, they uh, you know attract the uh, molecule uh, uh, present in the mobile phase and uh, hold the molecule and uh, 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 and in case of uh, molecules which has no affinity they can pass through so, so this is a very nice way uh, you can uh, separate compound uh, which has affinity or not affinity by using the affinity chromatography and affinity chromatography we know what kind of uh, you know ions or molecules are adsorbed uh, uh, in the uh, stationary phase and we can understand which are not you know adsorbed and pass through the uh, column and you can elute and collect the uh, you know materials so uh, if you are interested uh, uh, when you know adsorbed after the column you can uh, use another uh, uh, solvent to wash out the uh, attracted uh, molecules and get the uh, pure compound because they are hooked and uh, uh, you know adsorbed by the uh, stationary phase and all the other you know uh, compounds present in the mixture they pass through so uh, after washing the column with the same solvent uh, the remaining or attracted or uh, uh, which uh i uh, had the high affinity to adsorb by the stationary phase uh, if you use a compound which can dislodge this affinity then uh, uh, you know uh, the solvent can wash out the particular comp- uh, 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 compound that showed the affinity uh, and re- uh, you know break down the uh, affinity and uh, you can collect that compound as a pure one thank you any more question प्रेफारेंसियल मुभमेंट मुभमेंट अब दल रिक्वयर साम एबिलिटी अब दल टू मुव so for example we can move because we have the legs we use our two legs to move from one place to another many animals can do uh, the same but in case of cell uh, for example juicepur juicepur has the flagella bacteria uh, 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 have the flagella so they can uh, swim and move uh, toward the uh, chemicals uh, which attract them uh, but uh, there are some cells uh, in our body for example cancer cell has no flagella but they can move from one place to another uh, because they have the uh, internal uh, pseudopod uh, uh, to uh, push the cell uh, to move from one place to another amoeba also move like that way uh, so uh, obviously cell has some ability to move from one uh, place to another for showing the chemotaxis but uh, not necessarily a uh, cell has some external organ but internally uh, uh, by the stimulation of the chemotactic signal or the uh, bioactive signaling compound cell remodel inside you know cytoskeleton and then crawl and uh, move toward the uh, chemical uh, substances so in our cell uh, a body chemotaxis if you are asked uh, tell me one Uh, negative chemotaxis dangerous chemotaxis is you know the movement of uh, cancer cell from one uh, origin to the other place which is called metastasis you uh, obviously heard about metastasis in the last stage of cancer cancer cell uh, moves from the place of origin in the from the tumor to the other organs and then 
you cannot control the cancer and it is a very destructive. Thank you, sir. Oh, welcome. Any more question? Very good question. And chemotaxis can be positive or negative. Negative chemotaxis in case of compound is repellent, then uh, the you know organism or cell move away from the uh, you know uh, uh, compound. Then it is called repellent, and it is called negative chemotaxis. That means negative chemotaxis you can define like that way. Uh, you know uh, the uh, when uh, the cell move away uh, 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 from the uh, source of the uh, uh, bioactive compound, then it is called negative chemotaxis and the compound is called repellent. And in case of positive compound, uh, uh, chemotaxis, compound is called the attractant. Any more question? Please ask some more question because we have started, uh, uh, you know, uh, some uh, new area signal transduction pathway as well as in depth understanding of the, uh, you know, bio uh, 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 bio uh, activity as well as uh, the discovery of new uh, bioactive compounds. No. Uh, if I ask a question, uh, who can answer? Uh, what, uh, coclifilin A is an attractant, and it, it attracts the, uh, you know, uh, uh, juice pool, uh, pathogenic juice pool, and then pathogenic juice pool, uh, juice pools find the host and uh, uh, cause, uh, cause infection, uh, damping of disease. Why a plant produce such a, uh, uh, you know, uh, harmful compound uh, in their cell? What should be the answer? Coclifilin A uh, is not giving you uh, from our uh, presentation, we have seen that any benefit to the plant. Then why plants, uh, plant is producing this compound? Can anyone answer this question? Can anyone guess? Sir, I had very good. Yes, Sabrina? Sir, clear good. Sir, it to repeat good. Hmm? Sir, I have not got that clear good. Sir, question target versus repeat. My question is coclifilin A attract the juice pool, pathogenic juice pool, and help the uh, pathogen uh, to uh, uh, initiate infection uh, in the uh, you know, a uh, plant which is producing coclifilin A, like sugar beet or spinach. Why plants uh, are producing coclifilin A, which is not beneficial to the plant? What do you think? Sir. Who is answering? Sir, uh, Muad, sir. Okay, Muad, please. Sir, uh, I guess the uh, answer, sir, uh, coclifilin A, uh, maybe it is not uh, the um, attractant for, um, for the pathogenic, uh, pathogenic uh, organism uh, when it is firstly produced in, by the plant. It, uh, it may be... Uh, Although you cannot explain all the things. Uh, all secondary metabolites produced by the uh, any organisms, uh, uh, we must uh, understand that uh, they are, uh, you know, uh, biosynthesized uh, in the uh, cell for the benefit of the uh, uh, organism, uh, uh, the producer. Uh, producer, uh, for, uh, for nothing, they didn't do any, uh, you know, uh, job uh, biosynthesis of any compound. So you are right, initially coclifilin A uh, possibly was a, a, you know, a defense molecule uh, which protected uh, plants from uh, the microorganisms. But over the years of evolutionary arm race, uh, Aphanomyces coclidis somehow tolerated or 
avoided the toxicity. And uh, uh, as this molecule is a sign, marker of uh, the host plant, then the used is uh, as a, uh, a you know, chemotactic signal. That is, uh, co evolutionary uh, arm race, uh, Aphanomyces coccoides, uh, you know, get, uh, uh, gets the benefit. And they evolved in a way uh, that, uh, you know, uh, new receptors are synthesized in the uh, membrane of the co uh, aphonomyces cochlear juice pool. You see, uh, cochlear filling uh, never attract any other juice pool. So there were interaction between uh, uh, aphonomyces cochlides as well as uh, the, you know, sugar beet or spinous plants. And there were, you know, co evolutionary arm rays. And over the arm rays, uh, the aphonomyces cochlides tolerated or overcome the toxicity of the compound and then uh, they used it, it as a marker to select the uh, host plant. Uh, you see uh, 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 bitter gold, uh, Corolla uh, 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 pro, uh, has a beta test and beta test actually uh, uh, the uh, Corolla plant uh, produces uh, uh, for uh, inhibiting the herbivores so that uh, human or other animals uh, do not touch them and do not eat them because beta test uh, obviously repealing or stop eating. But over the years, you know, human uh, tolerated that bitterness. And now, Corolla, if it is not bitter, people do not like it. So a bitterness is somehow uh, is now uh, uh, you know, adapted to our test buds, and we love the bitterness of the, uh, you see, bitterness of the uh, corolla. Similarly, uh, bitter gold. Similarly, you know, uh, uh, chili. Chili plant uh, produces capsaicin for its hotness so that people cannot eat it. Uh, herbivore cannot eat it. But over the years of evolutionary arm race, human now love chili due to its hotness. If chili is no hot, then it's, uh, it would not be, you know, marketable and it, would, uh, it has uh, no value. So at certain level of uh, chili uh, hotness, uh, we can easily uh, uh, tolerate. So this is, uh, uh, happens through the long time evolutionary process, not happened in a year or 10 years or 20 years. It happened, you know, even 100 or th uh, 1000 years of co-evolutionary co processes and new receptors are uh, developed and you know gene uh, mutation also taken place so that both uh, uh, you know uh, interacting organism uh, developed a settled relationship thank you next please ask some interesting question sir i have a Question, Sir Farhana. Yes, Farhana. Sir, uh, I want to know the non host secondary metabolites, how they affect uh, for the motility of juice food. Ah, this is an interesting question. Yes, non host uh, secondary metabolites, you know. Host uh, metabolite juice food already uh, know how to overcome the uh, metabolites, uh, which are, you know. Are detrimental for them, juice pool uh, evolved in a way so they can tolerate uh, uh, the host plant and overcome this barrier. But at a time, juice pool cannot target all the, uh, you know, uh, plant secondary metabolites to evolve in a way. It is not possible. Uh, yeah, for example, we eat only limited number of plants, uh, uh, plant species, um, you, you know, uh, 50, 50 or like that. But other plants, they uh, uh, contain lots of, you know, uh, anti-nutritional as well as toxic compounds, bitter test or bad test compound. This is why we do not approach those other wild plants as our food. Similarly, non-host uh, metabolites, as they are defense compound, uh, the, uh, juice food uh, are, you know, ward off or stop, uh, you know, a, a attacking the non-host plant and they are designed in a way so that they can stop the uh, uh, you know, uh, pathogenic uh, organisms as well as uh, they were purposely produced to stop the uh, stop eating by the uh, or infecting by the other organisms, including the uh, human. Thank you.
Any more question? No? If no question, then I shall uh, I'll stop uh, uh, lecture here today. And if you have any more question, uh, please ask, uh, you know, uh, how to say, it. please ask the question uh, through your Facebook. And I hope you are uh, now studying uh, your paper and I am expecting fantastic presentation from you and you must submit your report uh, by, you know, uh, the Sunday, uh, that is uh, uh, two pages report uh, on the summary of the uh, scientific article or paper that you are studying and you have selected for presentation. Uh, and it would be a very nice, you know, uh, experience, I believe. Uh, whatever the, you know, it is challenging, never uh, uh, take it as a challenge. It is, a, a, you know, uh, and, uh, to take it as a challenge, never, uh, you know, be frustrated because uh, some of the uh, points you may not be uh, uh, understand uh, uh, well, uh, but uh, uh, if you go, uh, uh, you know, to the literature, search the internet and get the uh, answer of all uh, technical unknown terms, technical jargons, uh, and uh, if you do exercise as well as study more and more, uh, I'm sure you can understand any paper published in uh, uh, bioactive natural products, at least 80% or like that. So, uh, and if you have serious uh, uh, problem uh, uh, of understanding any specific, uh, you know, uh, uh, problem, uh, you know, topic or, uh, uh, you know, explanation in a paper, you can even discuss with me or with your friend, it is free. Uh, I want to see a great presentation from each of you. And it, uh, to uh, tell you frankly, even uh, undergrad student, I found undergrad students at uh, East West University, as well as Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman Agriculture University. They presented uh, the uh, uh, scientific paper very nicely. So uh, in the past, uh, since uh, 2010, uh, I uh, offered uh, young students to this, you know, global mass of knowledge, and I found them they perfectly uh, facing the challenge and, uh, you know, showing their fitness as well as uh, their talents. So I am expecting a fantastic uh, presentation from each of you. And by the way, uh, this evening uh, at possibly 9 a.m., uh, I shall uh, uh, go live on Facebook. Uh, uh, to discuss uh, the budgetary allocation uh, in higher education as well as in research. Uh, you may, uh, if you have uh, time and interest, you may uh, enjoy that talk. Thank you very much.